Welcome to the next video in our Workflows No Code Fundamental Pillar. Now, in the previous video, we went through a lot of detail, we went through a lot of slides, we talked about things like workflows, uh, if statements, loops, etc, etc. Now what I want to do is um, just bring to life a little bit with a demo on a tool called Glide. Now, if you haven't already, uh, just make sure you check out the database uh, video first um, uh, and also the data types videos where we're talking about things like variables because that's going to be a key thing to understand um, and implement in this workflow. But if you haven't heard about it before, uh, Glide is a mobile app builder uh, and it gets a lot of praise for being uh, one of the simplest, most approachable tools out there. But actually, over the last few months, they've added a lot of features. It's become really, really powerful. And so it is now not only easy to use, but it is very flexible and very powerful to use as well. So I've thrown together um, a really, really basic app. It is a really you know daft idea that I've come up with, which is... Imagine an app where you could log in, see some really cool apartments and vote on your favourite. Um, why would you ever build that? I've got no idea. Uh, although to be fair, uh, I'm very into interior design myself, so I'd probably quite enjoy that as an app. But um, what I really wanted to demonstrate to you was uh, things like uh, upvote functionality because it's a really common request uh, from people building no-code apps, but it's also going to let me show you workflows and a few other elements. So just to give you a bit of a lay of the land, um, the way that Glide works is, you know, clearly, first of all, it is a mobile app builder. Um, rather than build a native app that you can download onto the Apple Store or the Android Play Store at present, um, it actually makes it a what we call a progressive web app. Uh, and that is essentially something that uh, it opens, it works just like a website. Um, you can use it mobile, you can use it on the web, you can use it whenever you like. So it kind of lets you, technically it's about building a mobile app, but you can use it on a laptop as well. And so that means that I can literally use the app uh, right here in the middle uh, as if it was myself um, actually using it on a mobile. So... On the left, we'll get some general navigation. And by the way, this video is not so much about how Glide itself works. It's more to give you a demo of workflows. We do have a fantastic basics uh, series on uh, Glide. So check that out if you want to just really learn this interface. But I'll give you a bit of a, a, a flavor so you can follow along. But on the left, um, we've got our various different uh, screens, etc. cetera. Uh, we've got one here, shopping cart and chat. I've turned them off, but I've got the one at the top, choose your favorite apartment. That is the screen we're on now. Um, and then on this kind of bottom left bit, it tends to list all the components you've got in that screen. On this one, we've only got a list, which if you've seen our UI and UX pillar already, that's a repeating data list. However, if I click in there, all these different components open up. And as I mouse over them, you can see uh, you can see the, the screen changing to reflect that. So um, that's the left side. Clearly in the middle, we've got the actual uh, app itself. But on the right, I've got the configuration options for whatever screen I am on. Uh, if I pop back into that more complicated screen, then, you know, as I click down into various different um, uh, elements, etc., it's going to let me configure them, set them up however I want. So... That's how our app looks at the minute. Let's take a look at the database. And this is why I said it's really key to make sure you've seen that video. So we've got two uh, two databases here. We've got users. Um, I'm not gonna go into that just because I think I've got some of my personal details on it, but it is just a uh, name, email, uh, and a couple other wee details, nothing too important. But then here we've got our database of apartments. We've got a few interesting fields. We've got the name, we've got the description, all right, pretty obvious. We've got the number of votes. So where name and description are a text field, the number of votes is a, a numbers field. We've got an image field. And then we've got this one here. Uh, so upvoted, it's a question. It's a Boolean, you know, a true or false variable. Um, but... The way that uh, Glide works, and this is really rare in the no-code tool, I haven't actually seen this before until I saw it in Glide, um, you can set a user-specific column. So this Boolean, um, if I if I trigger something to mark it as true, it will only be true for the current logged-in user. So in a way, this upvoted field has a, a relationship with the user's table, which means if the logged-in user sets this to true or false, it only applies to the logged-in user. If another user comes in and sets it to false rather than true, they will see it as false on this table. So um, it's a little bit of an interesting quirk, but... Uh, you know, uh, you can easily do that on any other no-code tool by just creating a relationship um, to do uh, to create your bowling instead. So, 
Let's have a little bit of a look. Now, what we want to achieve is this. Whenever I click into an item, I want to be able to upvote it. So I want to be able to hit that button and it will come up with a, a one. If I had it right now, nothing happens because I've not really put any action on it. Um, action, by the way, is what Glide calls a workflow. I'll come to that in a minute. But I want to be able to hit upvote. I want this vote to go to one. And um, if I've already upvoted it, I do not want to be able to upvote it again. I want it to say, no, sorry, you've already cast your vote. You can't just keep hitting up and up and up. Now, uh, just to give you a, a bit of a, uh, look here. So if I click on where the zero is, uh, that piece of text, I have set that to be a variable. So rather, so if I, you know, if I look at the one above it, I have just written the word votes in there. I could easily change that to, you know, upvotes like that, and that will just change. I am just manually typing that text or hard coding it, as we sometimes call it. However, uh, for this piece of text underneath it, rather than hard code it by clicking a uh, custom bit and typing in, I've actually selected a variable which is the votes. So that's just going to take um, the the number of votes from uh, the particular database record that pertains to this uh, Manhattan apartment. And if you remember, Manhattan is one of our apartments. Votes are one of the records related to that. Um, and all we have here, uh, as I said from our, our UI UX list, is a repeating data list. So this list here, this UI element, is simply just a list of apartments. You can see the source there. I could easily put users uh, or I can put apartments and bring that back. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual workflow. So if I, uh, oops, if I click that button, select that, down here, uh, Glide is going to give me the, uh, the option to create an action or to edit an action. So if I click in here, I get this totally different canvas view. Now, um, <coughs> excuse me, this is um, this is Glide's equivalent of workflows. It lets you drag and drop uh, various different steps together to achieve something. Um, you can set your conditional right at the start here. If I mouse over that, you'll see it pops up as condition. And then you can choose what happens as we go along. So the first thing we want to do is, um, if you remember, we're going to we we want to make sure that we are putting that vote counter up by one uh, when we press the button. But if this user who is logged in has already pressed the button, we don't want them to be able to do it again. So we're going to add a condition, and we're going to have a look at what variables we've got. So we've got this upvoted one. It's a boolean. It's a true or false. And so we can essentially ask that the question is upvoted true or is it false. So I'm going to type in true. So we're going to say, uh, if, uh, if upvoted, it's true. In fact, actually, let's do it the other way around. Let's say if it's false, because we want to check for, for our kind of main brand, uh, branch of logic here, we want to say, uh, has it been upvoted? If not, then do this. So we can say, if it's false, do this. However, we can also say, else if upvoted is false. We can add another condition here that says if it's not false, i.e. if it's true, do something different. Now, we've got this reshuffle action. I don't actually know what that does. Uh, so I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to add a new action in. So this is just going to let me add a new step in our database. Now, let me just move myself over here. So there's three things uh, that we want to do here. We want to take that vote number and increment it by one. Uh, we also want to show a message that says, well done, you know, you've successfully upvoted it, um, just to give the user some kind of confirmation. But also we want to make sure this upvoted variable in the database changes from false to true, because that means when we come back to upvote again, um, you know, it's going to stop us just upvoting it again and again and again, over and over and over. So let's have a look and see what we can do. Well, the first thing we want to do is increment. And you'll see that immediately comes up in configures because increment is a function you can or, or a step you can commonly do on a numbers field. And this database only has one numbers field. But usually you can do increment, which will just say if the number is one, make it two. If it's 10, make it 11. If it's 12, make it 13, so on and so forth. It will just increment it upwards. So we're going to increment the votes by one. Perfect. Done. So the minute somebody clicks this, if they haven't already upvoted, it's going to increment it by one. The next thing that we want to do is change some of the data. Now, every tool is going to have a different name for this. You know, you can see things like add row, which means add record, delete row, which means delete it, or we get set columns. Set is going to let me update the data. So it's going to let me have a look at the, the items. And as you can see, um, the row or record is the current item. I've then got a uh, upvoted down here. So I can change that to say true. 
So what's going to happen is when this step runs, it is going to change the word upvoted to say true. So that's nice and easy. That's exactly what we want. And the last thing that we want to do, so we've now got it incrementing, we've now got it changing upvoted to true, which means it's been upvoted and it cannot be upvoted again. What we'll just want to do is show a notification. And in this notification, we're going to say you have uh, successfully updated, or sorry, upvoted this apartment. So we're just going to do that nice and easy and uh, save that. So there's a ton of different functions you can do here. You know, if I click that extra, there's tons of different stuff. You don't need to understand them all right now, but you can do stuff like copy certain information to your clipboard for uh, copying and pasting. You can uh, make the app open a link. You can make it view an address on a map. You can make it dial a phone number, send a text. Um, you know, you can add data, you can update data, you can delete data, you can connect to Zapier. You know, there's all sorts of stuff in here, going back, sending an email, playing a sound, webhook, all sorts of stuff that you can do um, that's going to let you configure a workflow to do whatever you like. And as you can see, just by chaining some of these together, um, you know, do we have a function for upvote? No, but we do have something for increment the number. We do have something um, for for updating uh, the existing variables like upvoted, uh, you know, we do have the ability to show a notification. All of that is going to let you create the logic that you need to do what you want. So we've kind of said here, right, if upvoted is false, i.e. if the user has not upvoted it yet, then something else should happen. So let's just put another notification in. And uh, essentially what we're saying is nothing should change. So we're just going to say, sorry, you already upvoted this. And so that's all we have to do there because nothing happens other than what we've specified. You know, on the, on the left hand side, because it's false, it only increments because we've told it to increment. On the right, we're not telling it to do anything. So we don't have to, for example, you know, de-increment it or we don't have to increment by zero. We don't have to set the columns at all because nothing is changing. So we can just say, well, show the notification. Sorry, you already upvoted this and done. That's all it's going to do. So let's save that. Uh, oops. Uh, I'm going to call that um, upvote. Pretty simple. I'm going to save it and then let's see it in action. Now, again, this is just going to show me my app working live. So I can just click things as I go around. Click upvote. And there you go, you've successfully upvoted this apartment. Click it again. Sorry, you already upvoted this. Okay, so I've already upvoted that one. Let's look at downtown Miami. All right, upvotes are zero. I want to upvote that. You've successfully upvoted this apartment. Uh, okay, so you got all sorts of different um, types of a, you know, logic that you can build in here to do this kind of thing, but you can see what we're doing is working. If I hammer my mouse click key, uh, just keep saying sorry, you've already upvoted this, you cannot do it again. Um, and so, you know, that just really shows you how flexible and easy these, these uh, workflows are to use. I mean, there's definitely some abstract thinking included because you've got to kind of figure out how you use your variables, etc., how you use your data, um, you know. Although, although this is a short uh, formula, I'm, I'm, I'm under no impression that this is necessarily easy. However, with a bit of experimentation, by taking the time to understand the steps, clearly you can put something together like this and make it work. Um, and the best bit is, you know, if I just pop out of there, uh, let me just upvote the last one to show you what I'm going to show you, already have. Um, when I go into this database, now the data is updated. I've actually, uh, in my, you know, the user being me in this case has directly influenced the database. It is a really just a good example of how you can put something together from front end to back end. And you think about a, a website like Reddit, for example, um, if you haven't used Reddit before, it's a bit like people can post comments, links, etc., uh, discussions, other people can reply and talk to them. But the main currency of that website is people upvote the things they're interested in and they downvote the things they are not interested in. Um, and so that is a key functionality, the core functionality of Reddit. And essentially we have just built that in all of, you know, 
15 minutes. So take a play around with that. We will put um, another couple of kind of workflow demos up. Also, we talk about workflows in all of our basics videos. So, you know, it's good just to watch them to start to get a flavor of how they work, how they think. Um, but the best thing you can do is just dive in, get some experience yourself, try it out, um, and just see if you can bring your own app logic to life. Thanks very much for watching and uh, stay tuned for more videos.